One of the ways I learned uh, that computers and programming in the late 1980s, right, was HyperCard on my uh, uh, Macintosh, Macintosh Classics, my uh, journalism school had. And uh, it was both a freeing environment, it let you do a lot of stuff, a lot of multimedia, a lot of nonlinear kinds of um, trans transference of information. But that was its marketing problem too. It did a lot and nobody could really define who it was for and what it did. And so we're gonna to talk to a new company that has something even more mind blowing for the new iPad uh, called Infinite Canvas. And we're gonna dig in and see if they have the same uh, promise and problems. Who are you? My name is Caitlin Leister, and I am the co-found and content evangelist for Infinite Canvas. Um, my background has been working with people, and I studied psychology, so I'm really interested in how people think and work. And I think storytelling is one of the biggest um, opportunities that we have to really communicate, and our goal with Infinite Canvas is to help people tell their stories in a way that is unique for them. And who are you? I'm Christopher Allen. I'm the co-founder and producer of the Infinite Canvas application for the iPad. Uh, I'm a longtime technologist, entrepreneur since uh, the 80s, uh, mostly been doing software and probably best known for being the co-author of the SSL standard and uh, the iOS dev camp of which I'm the hackathon host. Yeah, that's where I met you, right? Mm -hmm. Was that the first? iPhone dev camp. Can you believe what's happened in oh, yeah. six years or five years since uh, the iPhone came out? Um, you guys have an interesting product that's different than you know most products. Most products that I, I I see are for very specific use. You know, taking photos and sharing them or doing presentations. And you, you guys have a product that could be um, I don't know three or three to five use cases right off the bat. Tell me a little bit more about what, what you guys are doing, because you're building a platform, almost a, for, a format, almost a programming language, and, and almost a de developer environment, and that's hard to explain to folks. Yeah, right? I mean, it, we, as you said in your intro, um, you know, we are very much inspired by HyperCard. This isn't a HyperCard clone. We're not taking the old HyperCard and, and uh, you know, making an exact duplicate of it, but, it, but the, if you look at what Atkinson said, he wanted to empower people to be able to you know, use this wonderful computing tool that was the Mac in uh, late 80s, early 90s that had never done it before. He was proudest of you know, the, the children and non-professionals who created the you know, wonderful little interactive um, uh, apps. I don't know, they called them stacks at the time. Yeah. Uh, but you know, in effect, there were little applications that did things. And yet, if you look at um, uh, Tim Berners-Lee, when he f invented uh, the hypertext protocol and uh, HTML, he said, HyperCard was my inspiration. When um, the guy who invented the wiki, uh, he said, I was inspired by uh, that. Entire industries, the educational um, industry on CD-ROMs, inspired by HyperCard, and even the game industry. Mist was originally a HyperCard stack. Yeah, and most people, and you have to explain some of this history, because a good chunk of the pro programmers that are out there now have no idea Absolutely. what you were talking about. So you know? many people <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most my son's 18 years old, he's never seen HyperCard, because it sort of disappeared, because Apple couldn't figure out how to market it back in the, in the late 80s, and it sort of just died, even though there was my, my uh, class, projects were built on HyperCard, so. Um, so how do you explain what it is? It's a non-linear content presentation system, I would yeah, say. Yeah, I mean, right? and, and that, all of the, that is right on, and I think what you were, the examples you were giving earlier were all around kind of the ability to have something presented on the iPad and that has multiple directions, links to different things. I mean, essentially what you do with uh, Infinite Canvas is you build a map of your information. So you have the ability to really have that up, down, left, right, maybe there's a cluster over here, and then you have a huge visual representation of the entire project. So you can conceptually think of where the different areas of information are. 
Um, and, and these building blocks sort of look like slides and yeah, PowerPoint. they're like they're tiles. Right. And so similar to a, a PowerPoint or a Keynote is something where you input information onto a tile, and then rather than it being a linear output, you have a blank canvas that you can drag and drop and arrange and build this map of whatever it, it makes sense to the information you're trying to get. So at a simple level, it would be sli uh, slide one or, or tile one, tile two, tile three, tile four. But on tile two, you can go up to tile 2A, 2B, yeah. 2C, or down yeah. to 1, 2, 2, 2, 3. And then instead of it, when you get to the bottom, you don't want to be able to have to scroll all the way back. You just have a hyperlink that takes you back to 2 and then can maneuver around like that. And you can get really complicated. That's a very yeah. simplistic example. But th th this holds uh, stuff that's very graphical, right? So yeah. a comic mm -hmm. book or a... Um, I mean, something that was graphically designed with a, u, u, a raw user interface, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very much um, in the you know family of an ebook creator. I mean, you're creating an object that you can share that is you know has a variety of uh, information in it, but it is very uh, visual centric, uh, as HyperCard was. Um, yes, you can put text. You could do an ebook. Um, you could uh, you know. Uh, have a nonlinear ebook with it, but it's really optimized for graphics and images, and that's because it's on the iPad. We do a lot of things in some very specific ways because it's a tablet. So we see uh, eventually this being on other tablets, being on um, the iPhone, or even yeah. on the web. But I think we started with the tablet because it has the largest psychomotor connection. So you have the really the ability to swipe through, to go up and down, to maneuver with the content. Well, and it opens up new fields, right? For instance, let's just focus on retail. Let's say I work at Oakley, and I know a couple people who are there who are building kiosk systems for retail with iPads, right? Because mm -hmm. people can touch these things. They don't look like ugly computers. They don't look intimidating. You just walk up and you start touching it, and it does something, mm -hmm. right? What can you do? So let's build something for Oakley. I, I want to scroll through their different eyeglass. Right. Uh, um, well, you might start with an image that sort of allows the user to self-identify themselves. So, um, you know, you could have a, an image of a model uh, that was male, a model that's female, have you touch the model that you're interested in, and it will then move to something that shows a variety of different um, eyeglasses and frames for that, and being able to go through those and go, okay, I kind of like this um, square style. What are other square style things? Oh, there's a bunch of other square styles. And then at the very end, they can actually, um, since any tile can also be HTML5, you can have around the edges a little thing that is an HTML5 form that says, you know, I'm interested in um, having an attendant, you know, join me to to show me this particular frame, or has a stock inventory. First of all, what are the primitives of a tile? Can I touch and go to another tile? Can I, I can swipe and go to another tile? Correct. What, so what the, the 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 bottom level primitives are the the swipe action, so being able to go right, left, up, and down. Uh, from there, um, any particular uh, space on the page can have a hotspot. Um, or the whole page can have a hotspot that responds to various gestures. But like you said, male and female. So if I had a picture of a, you know a, a female snowboarder and a male snowboarder, they could just click on each one, and it would take us to a different tree. Exactly. Okay. And um, you also have the ability to um, trap other kinds of events. There's the uh, uh, tap and hold. So if you want more information, you can set it when they hold down their finger, something will pop up. Uh, you can you know, have it when you enter the tile, some music plays, or when you tap a button, some music plays. Um, the music can be playing in the or background voice. or in the foreground. Or voice, so that I can have a virtual right. salesperson right. You know, helping me out and go, hey, you, know, you should and check this right out. Right now, we have the ability that you can add the button and you just record a sound on the iPad directly, so it can be tailored to exactly the um, the day or the specific event that you're doing. And you can do, uh, on page load, can you do things like play a video? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I can swipe over and then as soon as the page mm -hmm. is done loading, it starts playing a video. Right. That's, and that's right. pretty cool. Can these things play automatically? And so if you just leave it alone, does it just start playing? Um, we don't have that feature now. We've had some requests for it. The, the thing that we've, we've always been trying to be very careful and not, um, um, overcommit ourselves to a specific 
direction until we know what people really want. But for a retail, you would at least want it to, after a minute of non-activity, maybe pop back to the hot, hot um, home screen? Right. Can you do that? Yes, that you can do. The, um, I think the, the interesting you know, challenge is that you know, we want to be able to have multiple paths. Um, so uh, I want, we want to be careful and not force people into something that is linear in something that is essentially a nonlinear medium. Yeah. That being said, you know, there's been some interest by people to say, okay, you know, here is the, um, I'm, you know, I'm showing this to a marketer path or the, I'm showing this to a technologist path. Um, I'm showing this to you know, um, a uh, finance person. Um, yeah. And literally, the, the product has the ability to move those tiles around and make a new presentation f based on you know, an audience, which is, uh, I think, an important part of this, is that it automatically can be matched to the audience. You said I can use HTML5 on this, Correct. right? So I, can I do payment systems on this and Correct. hook it up to Square and all that fun stuff? That is correct. Oh, wow. So basically, um, uh, when you're creating a canvas, any tile can either be a basic tile, which is basically images that have layers and buttons and interactivity, but then sometimes that's not enough. And in that particular case, you can put an HTML5 tile in, and you can do everything that you can do with HTML5 except one thing, which is scrolling. So you're typically design it for that one particular uh, page. So it's a no scroll bar interface. Correct. And I probably could put a chat room in there so I could have a virtual assistant, you know, somewhere else. Hey, you know, because yeah. if you're uh, building this for an Apple store, for instance, they, they have thousands or hundreds of stores. And so they could have a central call center that's watching all of these. And if somebody has a question, they can have somebody virtually. I mean, at Rackspace, we have that, yeah. right? When you come to mm -hmm. Rackspace.com, there's a chat a, a person 24 hours a day watching, or a group of people watching that homepage. And if anybody has a question, they answer back. Right. And as long as it works for um, um, mobile WebKit, uh, then it will work here. Let's say I was Oakley. How do I pay for this? And what's the, what's the fee? Um, the basic app is free the, to be able to view it. Um, at some point, we may charge a dollar for the basic app. The authoring is an in-app upgrade, uh, and it depends on what features you want. Right now, let's say I want them all. You want them all. <laughs> um, the, we're anticipating that you know in the twenty-dollar range yeah. for the basic uh, authoring. This is really going to put Oakley out. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to put so twenty dollars, and I can build whatever I want. Right. Okay. The now Oakley in particular may want some special features. So we have. Um, a kiosk uh, version of the code that they can license that basically locks out the other parts you can't uh, turns off the home button uh, you know does all the different things that um, they may need uh, for their specific needs um, uh, uh, they also might want to create a special version of it that has an Oakley icon and such and put it on the App Store themselves as a free little app that uh, uh, that people can use. We charge for that. Okay. So that's a custom call if you want to do that. You just Correct. call you guys up or yeah. email and get Yeah, get we're going to be doing white label services for a variety of different industries and companies. Very cool. So let's uh, riff on this. Uh, let's go into like a, a science lab, you know, where I'm building a, uh, a, a science exhibit. Mm -hmm. um, can we do weird, you know, spinning molecules and stuff like that? I guess you would have to learn some HTML5 to bring in some um, some graphics that are spinnable. Uh, tell tell me how crazy we can get. Well, yeah. <laughs> basically, Apple has something called um, a widget, which yeah. is part of um, their uh, uh, capability to be able to. Um, add all the, all the different functionality you've seen in iBooks authoring where you can have molecules moving around. All of those different things are widgets. Those are written in JavaScript. Um, so pretty much anything that you see in an iBooks author composer can also be put into an infinite canvas as a tile. So what, what else can we do? Let, just stick with the science class. Can I have a periodic table and then I can click on each on individual each thing? Buttons. I mean, essentially you have How would I make that work? to add, you know, you would probably have an image of the periodic table and then you would add individual buttons over each of the elements that you want to explore. And so you have the ability to have the essential home page and then that will take you off into the variety of directions of here's boron, here's carbon, here are the, you know, the other um, kind of directions that you can go in. Very cool. 
Where, where else do you see this being used? You, you well, guys have I mean, been out a couple yeah, months you, now. You've, um, you've given some great examples around kind of the um, acting as a, as a stationary platform that people can then come and interact with, but I also see it being really useful on the personal use basis. So, um, you know, a, a dad is going to make a, a, kid, a storybook for his kid, and so he's going to take all of the images that they've, you know, from their last trip or something and then make, you know, just create on his own and, you know, in his own kind of thing, and he might share it with his family. So it just, it becomes a very central, narrow circle um, project of his. But then again, you know, to take it to the education classroom, a teacher might say, I'm going to give you all a hundred assets um, to talk about the Civil War. And so then you have the ability to have 30 different interpretations of the same project. So let's say I'm a teacher and I want to create a, a, a what, infinite, what, canvas. infinite canvas of the Civil War. How do I distribute that to 30 kids who all have iPads? Dropbox. Right now we have the ability to use cloud synchronization with Dropbox. And so a, a teacher would say, I'm going to put this all in a Dropbox folder. Everybody has the access to the same uh, assets. They all download it directly onto their iPad. Then they start creating tiles and then they have, you know, so everybody has the same 100 tiles. Now it's up to each individual kid to say, you know, maybe we might start with this spine of the history and the, you know, the weapons or the you know the outcomes in different kind of uh, categories, but then they might be able to branch off or link something you know that you might think was totally unrelated, but that really actually has a you know a unique component or connection to it. So there, there's a, a creation mode of this, yeah, and then a authoring. runtime mode. Or a yeah, so mode? There, there's both the viewer and the author. Okay. And, um, is it all one thing, or right is it two now, separate yeah. apps? Right now, we we started initially with releasing the viewer, and we just found that um, people wanted to be able to author right right away. And so right now, people can author for free. I mean, when uh, when they download the app, about 12 tiles, so you can kind of get that feel of playing around, creating tiles, starting to have the multiple directions, and then um, the in-app upgrade will allow you unlimited tiles and um, kind of. It, as a creator, can I lock people out of the, out of messing with it, or is that all? Is it always sort of open source where the the people viewing the the uh, infant canvas can mess with it and change it? Yeah, no. It, it so we don't we don't we don't have digital rights management in it. On the other hand, we have very explicit support for licenses. So okay. you can choose. Um, you know, domain, all the Creative Commons content. licenses, the uh, you know, public domain, or all rights reserved. So uh, the app, if you um, uh, get a, uh, a Creative Commons uh, you know, open license from somebody of Canvas, uh, we will allow you to open it up and look inside and be able to reuse the things. And we'll even help you, you know, give cr proper credit to that person. On the other hand, if it's a all rights reserved, we won't we won't let you open it. Well, you can see uh, this this has some depth to it, and you need to play with it and stuff like that. And it, it goes beyond what, what we can do in a few short minutes here. Um, real quickly, how are you guys funded? And, um, and where I've are been, you taking the business of this? I've been funding this um, out of uh, you know from my other entrepreneurial ventures as a side project, and got really serious about it this year. And uh, we are now looking for seed investors to help take us to the next level. Very cool. And yeah. where do we learn more about it? Uh, you can go to www.infinitecanvasapp.com. Very cool. It's really cool. I'm going to play with it a lot because cool. I do presentations and we do, you know, my kids do these kinds of projects that need a nonlinear thing. And we've been playing with Prezi and different ebook reader, ebook technologies, but they just don't do what you guys do. So thanks for bringing this out. It's really cool. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.